this is a video based on a common question that I receive, and that is, I imported a rig into Blender, usually through FBX, and for example, the face bones look like this, like an absolute mess. And the weird thing is that this rig may have been uh, exported out of Blender. Uh, in fact, it is. So this is the original rig that I exported out of Blender uh, as FBX, and then I imported it back in Blender through FBX. Uh, something else that happens often, which is basically the same problem, here is another example of a rig that I imported through FBX. Uh, in this case, that was generated in uh, the AccuRig software, but it could be Mixamo or it could be a rig from anywhere. Um, so if I go to the rig and go to pose mode, if I grab this bone and rotate it, it kind of rotates the upper arm only. And then if I try to select this uh, small bone underneath the other bones, uh, it kind of moves the whole arm. So basically this bone should be the upper arm, but lengthwise it is just half the length of this upper arm. And it's the same here in the lower arm. Um, there's this small bone, which is actually the, the lower arm. And you may think that something is broken, that something is seriously wrong with these uh, rigs, but really it isn't, except on a surface visual level. But functionally the rig is okay. And another related problem that you may encounter, if you import a rig from another application, the bones may be pointing in seemingly random directions. I'm going to cover this at the end of the video. So I'm going to do a little TLDR here, a quick explanation, and after that uh, I'll go into a more in-depth explanation and you can watch it if you want to. So basically Blender has this concept of a bone length. Each bone has a beginning and an end, and that defines the length of the bone. And this bone length does play a role inside Blender, especially for specific workflows that we can use. But once a mesh is already bound to a bone, the bone length actually doesn't matter, uh, which means that if I grab this bone for the upper arm, I can go to edit mode and make sure that I'm in individual origins, and then I can scale up this bone until it's as long as the actual upper arm, then go to pose mode and rotate it, and it will have the exact same behavior as before. I can go to edit mode and scale it down really, really, really small, and go back to pose mode, and it will have the exact same behavior. Basically, the main properties of a bone is um, its pivot point, and the part of the mesh that it controls uh, through vertex weights. And the reason you get this incorrect bone length is because not every 3D application has this concept of bone length, just like Blender does. My guess is that FBX does not have it. And so when you get a rig like this with incorrect bone lengths, you can go to edit mode and edit the length of your bones uh, as you desire. or you can just keep working with the incorrect bone lengths. Again, functionally, that won't be a problem. And so for these crazy face bones, all you have to do is um, select all of them and make sure that you don't have the head selected and the neck, and then with individual origins, scale down all of these bones. like this, and as you scale them down, you'll see that they start to assume the shape of the original rig. So fixing this will be a little bit time consuming because some bones need to be shorter and, and others need to be longer. But if you need to do it, you can do it. Just keep scaling up and down. So let's take it a little bit slower now and try to understand what a bone is in Blender. So if I just create a single bone, uh, this is what it looks like. This so-called octahedral shape. And it has a thick end and a thin end. The thick part is the start of the bone and it's called the head. And the thin part is called tail and it's the end of the bone. And the thick part is also the pivot point. If we go to pose mode, 
and rotate this bone around, you'll see that it rotates around its head. So head and tail are very important um, terms in Blender rigging. If you go to edit mode, I'm using the spy menu, but you can switch uh, from here, edit mode. So if you go to edit mode, end panel, item, you see that you have head and uh, tail parameters. And these are just the positions of the head and tail in world space. So if I change these X, Y, Z values for the head, it will move in space. And same for the tail. So the distance between um, head and tail is the bone length. We even have a value here called bone length. If I tweak it, my bone will become longer and simultaneously its tail um, values will be tweaked. And also if I tweak the tail values, you'll see that the length of the bone changes. And something surprising about bone length is that it does not matter that much. It's nice and it gives a visual cue about uh, the quote-unquote bones that we are working with. And it also helps in the automatic weights algorithm uh, to create good weights for us. So for example, here I have two armatures. And both armatures are a chain of three parented bones. Okay, same here. The difference is uh, the bone sizes. So if I parent this with automatic weights, and this one as well, and go to pose mode, you'll see that the results that I'm getting from the deformations from the automatic weights are very different. So bone length can be useful inside Blender for enabling certain workflows but essentially a bone can be defined only by its head because the head is the pivot point of rotation of the bone. For example, once I have set the weights for this cylinder, I can go to this rig, edit mode, and first I need to disconnect um, all P and disconnect the bones. And then I can select all of them and make them smaller, just like the other armature, go back to pose mode, and I'll still have the same deformation as before. That is because at the end of the day, the bone is defined by its pivot point and the vertices that it affects through vertex weights. And if you need to understand vertex weights, I have a little beginner series about that. I'm going to share a link to it. Okay, again, uh, bone length does not matter once the weights are set. Um, I can also go to edit mode and make these bones really big and you'll see that the effect is the same. So a bone in 3D software, even in Blender, is essentially a pivot point. Blender chooses to implement a length component uh, for various reasons. 3ds Max is kind of similar in that regard, but Maya, for example, as far as I know, because I don't have a lot of experience with Maya, but it has um, joints rather than bones. So in Maya, you can actually see a bone that is literally just a point. Now in Maya, you can also see bone-like shapes, but these are just lines drawn between two parented joints. And so they also indicate the parenting between the bones. Unreal Engine is kind of similar to Maya, but to me, the way it draws the bone is counterintuitive, but that's a topic for another video. So by now you should understand that a bone is mainly defined by its pivot point and that different 3D applications draw or represent bones differently. And if you get that, uh, you should start to understand why we get such results uh, when we import rigs through FBX. Unlike Blender, FBX has no idea about bone length, and so Blender's FBX importer tries to guess how long a bone should be. Uh, that is usually done based on the parenting of the bones, but sometimes it gets it wrong. And this is especially pronounced in uh, bones at the bottom of the hierarchy, because now there is nothing to suggest their length. Okay, a somewhat related topic is leaf bones. If I select this armature, which is the original Blender armature, that I have and go to File, Export, FBX. Under Armature, there is this Add Leaf Bones setting and it is on by default. 
Um, you may have reasons uh, to keep it on, but personally, I always turn it off. And so this result that we got here with the uh, huge face, face bones, that was because I exported this rig without leaf bones. Now, if I select this rig and export an FBX with leaf bones, And now I'm going to import it again. And again, on the armature, um, I'm not going to click the ignore leaf bone uh, option. I highly recommend that you leave this setting unchecked because if you enable it, it may end up removing bones that are not really leaf bones. Uh, it may make a mistake. So this setting is dangerous. Keep that in mind. Uh, now I'm going to import with these settings. And now, if we look at this rig, you'll see that bone lengths actually look much better. But now the problem is that all of these leaf bones were added. And now we either have to manually delete them or just leave them like this. Again, functionally, they won't create a problem. It's just that they get in the way. And so when it comes to leaf bones, my recommendation is to export without adding leaf bones and also import without removing the leaf bones. That will create these um, inconsistent bone lengths, but I think bone lengths are easier to manage than leaf bones. Another workflow is that you do export leaf bones and then uh, use this option to remove leaf bones on import. But again, I do not recommend this because you may end up removing actual uh, functional bones. At the end, let's also talk about this mess here. Sometimes you may import a rig and see the bones pointing in weird directions. This only happens when the rig came from another application. It will never happen if the original application where the rig was created was Blender. And the main reason for this is that in Blender, the length of the bone is always along the y-axis. This is called the primary axis. Okay, so if I take this Unreal Mannequin here that I imported uh, and I go to edit mode and just create a new bone and move it to the side. So this is our default bone in Blender. And if I go to armature tab, viewport display and enable axis and the X-ray so that I can see through the bone, um, you'll see that the length of the bone is along the Y axis. And this is an unbreakable rule in Blender. If I rotate this bone, the length will always be aligned with the y-axis. Okay, so let's take a look at these um, bones that we imported from Unreal. Again, this is not just a problem with Unreal. It can happen with other applications as well. So I'm going to enable axis. And you see that while this bone is visually pointing in the wrong direction, it is aligned with the y-axis of the bone. So what is happening is that in the original application, the uh, primary axis was the x-axis. And to keep compatibility with the original application, Blender imports the bones with their original orientations, which forces it to display the bone in the wrong direction. Again, the advantage that this has is that it keeps the rig compatible with the original application. So if you intend to move back and forth between Blender and Unreal, for example, in this case, then you have to find a way to work with these um, weirdly oriented bones. Now I'm going to show you one way to fix these orientations. Uh, it has a drawback and I'm going to explain that uh, as I go along. So let's go to object mode and just move this rig out of the way. And I'm going to import the same uh, model basically from Unreal. Here it is. And now under armature in the FPX import settings, I'm going to tick the automatic bone orientation setting. Just enable it and click import FBX. Okay. I'm just going to delete some of these LODs. Okay. And now you see that all of the bones are oriented in a way that makes sense. The bone lengths are again kind of messed up, but we already covered that. But the main disadvantage of this technique is that if I go to pose mode, for example, um, and enable axis, you'll see that Blender basically changed the default orientation of these bones so that they look good in Blender and that uh, they're more usable in Blender. But as a drawback, 
since these axes are different, if I now animate this um, skeleton in Blender and export the animation to Unreal, the animation will look horrendous. And here is an example of what this looks like that I created while testing this stuff. And there is a way to have your cake and eat it too. And by that, I mean that I can have this rig with the nicely oriented bones as a control rig and the one with the weird orientations as an export rig. And basically I need to constrain the export rig to the uh, control rig. And the whole process is not too difficult, but it will take uh, some time. So I'm not going to demonstrate it in this video, but if you're interested, let me know and I may cover it in a future video. So for now, I'll leave it at that. As always, big thanks to all of my viewers and supporters. Please click like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you in another video.